Hey everyone, today we're going to learn how to simplify thirds. But before that, let's understand why do we use thirds. Thirds is a convenient way of writing irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are numbers that can't be written in fraction. In fact, they are long answers. If you put any of these in your calculator, square root 54, square root 75, you're going to get a long answer. A long answer that's not even repeating, nor does it terminate. It just keeps going. So it's very important to understand that how do we work with numbers like these? We use thirds. We can add, we can subtract, we can multiply, we can divide. However, we also need to know how to simplify. Need to know how to simplify. Today we're going to learn a very important concept, if not the most important concept, in thirds, and that is to simplify thirds. Let's start by doing one at a time. Starting with square root 12. Square root 12. We want to simplify that into its simplest form. When we are simplifying thirds, we look for two numbers that multiply to get 12. One of them has to square root. One of the numbers has to square root. Let's see. Two numbers that multiply to get 12. So factors of 12. Two of them. One of them must square root. We can't use 6 times 2, because 6 can't square root, nor can 2. So, we look for another two factors. What are they? 4 and 3. 4 and 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Does one of them square root? Yes, the 4 square roots. It becomes a 2. The square root of 4 is 2. So, how do we write it? The 4 it gets square root, it becomes 2, it goes outside the square root sign, and the 3 stays inside. We write it 2 root 3. 2 root 3 is the answer. It has the same value as root 12 or square root 12. It's the same answer, but it's simplified. It is simplified. We look for two numbers. One of them has to square root. 4 times 3 make 12. One of them square roots the 4, square root, it comes out, becomes a 2. 2 root 3 is our final answer. The next one, root 54. We are asked to simplify. What do we do? We look for two numbers, the factors of 54. One of them must square root. So what do you think are the factors of 54 that one of them will square root? We know 9 times 6 equals 54. Does one of these square root? Yes, it does. The 9 square roots, the square root of 9 is 3. Three root 6. Three root 6, that's our final answer. 9 times 6 make 54. The 9 square root, it comes out. The square root of 9 is 3. Three root 6 is our final answer. So the rule, we look for two numbers that multiply to get 54, and one of them must be able to square root. The square root of 99. Think about it. The factors of 99, one of them must square root. What two numbers multiply to get 99, and one of them square roots? What do you think? Have you thought about it? It's pretty easy. 9 times 11. 9 times 11 make 99. Which number here square root? The 9 does. It becomes 3. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 root 11. That's a simplified third. Square root 99 is exactly the same as through. Exactly the same as 3 root 11. Root 75. Once again, two numbers that multiply to get 75. Remember, one of them must be able to square root. Two numbers, what are they? 25 times 3. 25 times 3 makes 75. Which one square roots? The 25 square roots, and it becomes a 5. The square root of 25 is 5. It comes out of the square root sign, and the 3 stays in. So our answer... 5 root 3, which in fact means 5 times root 3. 3 times 
root 6, 2 times root 3, and 3 times root 11. There's an invisible multiplication in all of them. That's what it means. But we just say it as 3 root 11, 5 root 3. But in fact, it means 5 times root 3, 3 times root 11. Next one, square root 200. Again, now you should be able to get the hang of it. Two numbers are multiplied to get 200. One of them must square root. What are they? The factors of 200, there are heaps. But we're looking for two. One of them must be able to square root. 100 times 2. 100 times 2 make 200. The 100 square roots, the square root of 100 is 10. 10 goes outside. 10 root 2 is our simplified answer. Square root 40. What two numbers multiply to get 40? And one of them square root. 4 times 10. 4 times 10. The 4 square roots. So the 4 comes out. 2 root 10. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 root 10. 60. The square root of 60. Two numbers that multiply to get 60. One of them must square root. 4 times 15. 4 times 15 makes 60. Which one square roots? The 4 square roots. The 4 comes out, its square roots becomes a 2. So 2 root 15, that's our final answer. If you put root 60 in your calculator, and you put 2 times root 15 in your calculator, you're going to get the same irrational number. It's a long answer, but it's a simplified way of writing this third. Root 50. Again, what are we looking for? Two numbers that times that multiply to get 50, the factors of 50, one of them must square root. What two numbers multiply each other to get 50? Does 5 and 10 make 50? Yes, they do. Does 5 or the 10 square root? No. So we have to look for another two. 25 and 2. 25 times 2 make 50. The 25 square roots comes outside and the 2 stays inside the root sign. So answer 5 root 2. You can grab your calculator and try square root 50. 5 times root 2, you'll get the same answer. you get one long irrational number. So thirds are simple ways of writing irrational numbers. Now we looked at how to simplify thirds. To simplify thirds, we are looking for two numbers that multiply to get the third. One of them must square root, and the one that square root goes outside. 10 root 2 is our final answer. Very important that you know this skill. When we're going to be multiplying, dividing, and adding and subtracting, we're going to use this skill all the time. We're going to always ask ourselves, can I simplify the third? You must always simplify your thirds to get your answer and to get correct and to get all the marks that you are going to look for.